Hi everyone. You alright? Cool. So, I'm gonna have a short talk. I'm, I'm pretty sure this is not gonna fill the half an hour. But, you know, I just wanted to um, present my work I've done at Diesel Zahlhelden. I'm Christoph, I'm a member of Diesel Zahlhelden, which is a non profit organization based in Berlin. And um, one of our projects is realmap.org, and it's an online map for wheelchair accessible places. And besides that, I'm a freelancing software developer. Realmap.org, has anybody heard of it yet? That's cool. Awesome. Yeah. Um, basically, it's a Ruby on Rails um, application which um, is sporting the OpenStreetMap data for points of interest. What we did is we made ourselves a copy which is um, minutely synced from the OpenStreetMap database and then we strip out everything we don't need. So we discard um, land masses and what else? Streets. We, we're just interested in points, like let's say points of interest. And that's what we have in our database. Right now it's about 5 million of them in there. And what we do is we gather information, point data, like addresses, um, telephone numbers, and of course the geolocation. And what's the most important thing is if that place is wheelchair accessible or not. And once we gather that information from the website, from the iPhone app or Android app, um, we put it on a worker queue and write it back to the OpenStreetMap. And this code, which was handling all the talking to the OpenStreetMap, was baked in into the OpenStreetMap for almost two years. And now the time has come where we ripped that out and made a library of it. Um, in Rubyland, libraries are called Ruby Gems. So we made that little gem called Rosemary because there's an R in it and O is M and we thought it was a nice name. So, um, What it does is it's basically an API wrapper. So you can ask Rosemary, hey give me what, whatever, give me node number ID something or give me all nodes in this certain area. And I didn't um, start from scratch, but um, Jochen Topf from Geofabrik in Germany wrote a library in uh, 2008 <coughs> and that could just read from the OpenStreetMap. So it was just read and then do whatever you want. There was no write support yet and I thought this, this must come to an end and I wrote the code anyways. So it was, you know, it was baked into the real map. And then I took his library and said, all right, then I'm going to put on top um, all of my code that I did to support the writing. What we have today is um, we have read and write support for basic stuff like um, writing ways, notes and uh, relations and creating changes, change sets, close them, query them and we uh, support both authorization um, schemes like basic all with email address and password and OAuth support as well. And this um, code is open source, so you can um, get it on GitHub. Um, so I try to wrap the whole thing nicely in Ruby to, to make it easy to use. So um, this is basically it to create a node um, on OpenStreetMap with the Ruby library. So it takes six lines of code and the last one is actually you know, we don't actually need it. So it's five lines of code and you have a new um, node created which is in um, the void uni at the current location where we are. Um, yeah, this is basically it. The code is on GitHub right now. You can fork it. It's not fully implemented yet. So what I did is I implemented all the API calls we need for the real map, which is um, saving and retrieving nodes, rays and change sets and um, yeah I would be very happy if anybody uses it for its own projects get me some feedback, get me some issues, whatever it's not doing properly or maybe 
we have an extensive um, test suite to, to run against the API. And yeah, and if, I would be more than happy if you fork it, make some improvements, and then give me a pull request. So that's my Twitter handle, email address, and this is where you can find the code. Um, any, any questions? Any <laughs> suggestions um, whatsoever? Or if you, whatever you want to live demo? <laughs> what, what you want to do? I mean, interaction, please. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, uh, this, uh, that, does this API have any um, REST interface? It is, yeah. It is. Mm, if you would ask the REST heroes, they would say no, but it's an HTTP based um, API, yeah. And this is wrapping, the, the Rosemary is wrapping all around this so you can work with the objects and just give me the node save the node, whatever, and then in the background it's doing the HTTP calls. But this is, I mean, weird setup, so actually you don't want to mess with the details because this is um, not so done, not done so nicely, actually. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure the um, next version, which would be 07, could be designed much more better, much better. But right now, the, the latest stable version is 06 for like uh, the last two years, and it's yeah, it works okay. Let's say. So. I'm also interested in the data format. How the points are stored actually? Is it like any semantic uh, pure representation? Um, the the um, API calls XML only. So if you ask it, they give you. The, the typical OSM XML dialect, and then there's there's a um, libxml based parser in it, which is quite efficient and, and can parse the format pretty quickly without producing too much load on on the client. And then you know that's what this um, thing is for. You don't have to bother with the format, and you don't have to parse it on its own. It's all done with Rosemary. Anyone else? All right, then um, I'm going to go for it and give a little quick demo, and then maybe you can just tell me how you feel. Hopefully, the API is online. Or So we're going to fire up the console on the Ruby project, which takes a bit. All right, and then we just go for it and create ourselves an API. And then we ask the API. This, this could be something like an improvement, giving a symbol instead of a string. Bam, that's it. So this is um, fetched from, from the API directly, but what, what you get is a node object, and you can ask it for what's the amenity, and it says go, or what's the name. So it keeps you from all the dirty details you don't want to mess with usually. You, you want to, I mean, in Rubyland, you want to work with objects and make it as simple as it gets. Is there to support all kinds of uh, types, nodes, vectors, relations? We support nodes, rays, and relations right now, yeah. Oh. And but they, they can be deeply nested, but the nesting is not supported yet. Oh. So if you hit the barrier or something, find me an issue on GitHub and then we'll see you of course. Was the question? Yes, how um, will change that ending. Well, if you update the record, um, you uh, uh, create a change set. Yeah, that's true. And then you close change set after update, or you leave it open for next. You version? can leave it open. Um, I had it on the in the presentation. Um, the the last line closes the change set. You can close it manually, or you can leave it open, and the server will close it after an hour. And you can reuse it, of course. So if you want to so save more than one or something like this on the. What's it? 
Do you store a session copy like this? Or no, we don't. How, how is it managed? Is that you need to change that open and come back to this? Um, what we do is you have to um, hold on to the change set during your session. So if you, if your app, whatever, using yeah. sporting the library opens up a change set, it has to you know, remind the number, the ID of the change set. And then you can reuse it again. So you can, can ask for a change set. Something like this. So if you have it and you can you can ask is it open or not? And if it's still open you can use it to save another node. And then you know can keep going. And once you finished you just close it manually or leave it open and the server will close it after an hour. Yeah, that's basically good. Yeah. Is there any other offers, any proximity search, uh, proximity or corridor or bounding box search and search for files? There is, yeah, there is a bounding box search, so you can um, ask, um, give me all nodes or ways within the bounding box of whatever string you give it. Mm -hmm. But I'm not quite sure if I really implemented it yet. Because, um, it, it could be rather slow. I mean, the, the API just um, allows you to use a quarter of a degree as a bounding box boundary, otherwise it would reject the request and say, no, the area is too large, you, you couldn't use it. So it's probably not usable for querying large data sets. You, that's why at the wheel map we have our local database, so you can make the query as large as we want. But, um, so the, yeah, querying like a big set of nodes or ways is not encouraged by the OpenStreetMap API maintainers. They say, if you really want to use it, get yourself a copy and make the query on that on your own database. Is there an There is, of course, yeah. Hang on. This is on our... Jesus, didn't prepare myself that well. Um, is this one? Yeah, that's the one. But there's the big wiki, um, and it's, that's all the resources there are on, on the API. So changing the change set, creating ones, all the nodes, all the elements. So there's, there's heaps of it, and heaps of text. So get yourself. Um, educated on the API documentary, but I mean this is the nitty-gritty details. That's what Rosemary tries to save you from and you know leave you with the object. Just an architectural question. I mean, how difficult would it be to integrate this API with a different network of this to use another database, like Google Maps or Nokia Maps? Or then you would need another wrapper. API. So to trigger an, a different API which has different resources, so they, I mean there's other Ruby libraries out there that does that already. But there wasn't any for OSM, so I did it. So, anyone else? Alright, that was short. Then thank you for your attention. And yeah, I would love to get feedback or if you use it for your next project, just um, drop me a line and say how it goes. Okay.